little about your fellow headliner this evening. Well, this incredibly talented designer and extraordinary individual won Project Runway All-Stars. This is his fourth year being here to support the event. And so he's been here since the inception. But before I bring him out, Denver needs to hear the story of how Mondo was cheated out of the win for season eight. And the story I have, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna go back to Mondo's home visit season eight. Crew members, for the most part, are not fashion people. And Mondo's home visit was the last of the four that I made that season. And the crew members all looked at each other and looked at me and said, well, this is no contest. It's so evident and easy to see that Mondo's the winner of season eight. So, I got in trouble with Heidi. There's a little bit of an aside here. Because I was so frustrated over the way the judging went during season eight that I referred to season eight as the season of the crack-smoking judges. <laughs> and unfortunately, the Los Angeles Times picked it up and printed it. So when I arrived for the, our finale uh, and um, had my first and little, well, actually, no, I'm gonna back up a bit. So Heidi was miffed and Lifetime told me so. And I said, well, I, wasn't saying that she's really a crack smoker. I mean, she's not, is she? So we return for the, the finale. There is that horrible session that I hate so much where the four designers compete for th three places. Michael Costello is sent home. And I have to tell you something. I don't know whether you rem how much you remember about season eight, but every single challenge I was when the, when the designers were on the runway, I was back at the Atlas Apartments packing Michael's bags. I thought, this is it, he's going home. Well, it didn't happen. And why did he stay? Because the judges responded positively to his work. So the fact that he would return for the finale and they would turn on him and say, well, you're not good enough to show, I was indignant. So before Michael knew, I mean, I had a little bit of a heads up about where things were going. I took Heidi aside. And I said, I really need to talk to you. This just seems so unfair and so unkind. And she looked at me and she said, you have no voice. You're not a judge. You don't matter. And I thought, oh, this is the being miffed part coming out. <laughs> so we have our show at, at, at uh, Lincoln Center. It was our first show at Lincoln Center. And we come back to Parsons for the deliberation, first the Q&A, then the deliberation. So during the deliberation, I noticed something happening. First of all, Nina and Heidi are totally Mondo addicts. They are completely in Mondo's camp. Michael Kors, on the other hand, <clears throat> is saying, you know, I think it's about time that a classic sportswear designer win this season. And Heidi said, who's that? And he said, well, Gretchen, of course. And she said, would you let her work for you? And he said, well, of course. And she said, well, you, I know you wouldn't. And I don't even remember who our guest judge is because that never matters anyway. Uh, so Michael starts working on Nina. And here's what he does. During the, this preview that the judges have uh, when this elimination was made of Michael, the judges are, of course, giving feedback to the designers about their presentation. And Nina's, you know, the style person. And it's always about the hair, the makeup, the jewelry. So she gave feedback to Gretchen, who needed desperate help with that makeup and jewelry, let me tell you. And she gave feedback to Mondo. And Michael turns to Nina and says, well, you know, Gretchen listened to you. Gretchen did every single solitary thing that you told her to do. And I thought, well, that's because she needed to. <laughs> and he said, Mondo didn't. So basically, Mondo thumbed his nose at you. So Nina's in her, on her stool, and she's shifting around saying, oh, that's right, that's right, Mondo didn't listen to me. So now her ego is damaged, and she's become a Gretchenite. <laughs> so I see Heidi 
coming across the, the auditorium, and I'm always sitting in the back in the literal and metaphorical dark, and I think, well, she's not coming to me. She must be going out the door. No, she is coming to me. And she comes over to me, and I, you know, usually I will rise when, it doesn't matter what gender you are, but you're coming to see me, I'll get up. I thought, I'm not getting up. <laughs> so I just look at her with a face that says, yeah. And she said, I need your help. What? Well, who do you think should win? Who do I think should win? Well, Mondo, of course. So actually, I missed a beat, sorry. Who do you think should win, she asked me. And my, res my initial response was, why do you care? I have no voice, I'm not a judge, my opinion doesn't matter. And she said, no, really, who do you think should win? And I said, well, Mondo, of course. And she said, well, so do I. So come with me to Michael and Nina and anonymous guest judge and help me convince them. I said, this is not going to go well. But I did, I went. Michael, I have to tell you, was intractable. Nina is, is of course, now feel, feel, feeling like this hurt little f frail flower, as though Mondo brutalized her. And Heidi is indignant that this whole thing is going south so quickly. So I return to my seat. Actually, Heidi escorts me back to, to, to my seat. We're arm in arm, and she whispers, so am I no longer a crack smoker? <laughs> And I said, correct, you are no longer a crack smoker, but you passed the pipe to Nina and Michael. So now they've had a double dose. So that is exactly what happened on that dark and dreary afternoon and evening. So now, let us bring out our local hero and head judge, Mondo Wera.